a look at what new films are coming out this weekend, and for that we're joined live by film critic Richard Krauss. Richard, it's always great to see you because it means it's Friday heading into the weekend. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's good to be here because that also means the same thing to me. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's start with the uh, fresh take on a Shakespearean classic. Yeah, this is Rosalind. You'll find it on Disney Plus, and it uh, examines Romeo and Juliet, but from a slightly different perspective. So Rosalind is a character in Romeo and Juliet, although she doesn't appear on stage. You hear her referred to several times, and here she's played by Caitlin Deaver. Uh, we've seen her in things like Dope Sick and Dear Evan Hansen, uh, and she is Romeo's first girlfriend. What ends up happening, though, is that, you know, as teen love uh, is fickle, uh, he leaves her and starts dating her cousin, Juliet, and then Rosalind decides to spend the rest of the film trying to break them up. Uh, now, there's more to it than that. It's a rom-com, coming-of-age story, uh, but that's essentially the, the push and pull of it. And uh, it's set in period clothes and it's a period piece but they use modern day vernacular so this isn't Shakespeare but it's very funny and it's well observed and the performances are terrific so I gave Rosalind now playing on Disney Plus three out of five stars it's worth a look it's sitting there right now on Disney Plus for you all right shaking up the classic Romeo and Juliet tale with a quite right. twist there it sounds like <laughs> let's stick with the epic tragedies tell us about Triangle of Sadness yeah, this is uh, a tragedy. It's a dark comedy. Uh, there, there's lots going on here. It's divided into three sections. The first section is set in the fashion world, and we get a, a look at how models and influencers lead their lives. Uh, we follow two of them in particular who wind up in the middle section on a $250 million yacht with some of the richest people in the world. It is captained by a character played by Woody Harrelson, who is an American an anarchist and a communist and he hates all the ultra rich people who are on his ship so he schedules a dinner for what will be the worst weather of the trip just the absolute giant waves is going to rock that yacht all over the place because he wants to make his guests as uncomfortable as possible to make uh, some kind of point and it's a point really that maybe only he understands but that's part of the story here too uh, and that section is unforgettable I can only describe it as seasickness gone wild. It is a ballet of bodily fluids unlike anything <laughs> I've ever seen before. And then you have a third section, uh, which is kind of a Lord of the Flies situation. Uh, this is um, smart. It's funny. It might be the very definition of a film that's not for everybody, but I gave it three out of five stars. It's in theaters right now, and I give it a big recommend if you're an adventurous film goer. All right. Never thought I'd heard the word, hear the words ballet of bodily fluids on TV, but it seems like yep. it fits. It's the only, it's the <laughs> nicest way I can describe what's happening in this film. Exactly. All right, so let's lighten the load a little bit. We have finish off with Action Man, Hitman's Holiday. This is actually called Accident Man. Accident That's Man, excuse me. That's his nickname because he plays a hitman. Uh, Scott Adkins plays a hitman who makes all his murders, all his kills, look like accidents. So he does one very spectacular one in Europe somewhere, and then he's got to flee. He's got to, to let the, the, the law calm down and stop looking for him a little bit. So he goes to Malta, where he is uh, kidnapped by the Maltese, uh, leading Maltese crime fa uh, family, and told that he has to protect their son from seven assassins from all over the world that are uh, coming their way to kill their son. And essentially what you have after that is just a lot of action scenes. Action Accident Man is uh, fighting a lot of uh, outrageous and wild assassins from all over the world. That's all this movie is. It is a thinly plotted uh, kind of, you know, with fun characters and a lot of wild action. But I can't really figure out whether it's supposed to be an homage to or a satire of Jason Statham movies, the kind early on that Statham made where there were a lot of fight scenes that didn't have computer-generated imagery or anything. They were authentic. They looked uh, real. They were kind of fun in the B-movie sort of way. That's what this movie is like. I gave it three out of five stars. It's on VOD right now. It's a good Saturday night after two beers kind of movie. All right, turn off your brain and watch some action. <laughs> That's right. All right, Richard Krause, thanks so much for this. Always appreciate it. Thanks for having me.